Good morning. Here we are. <laughs> we survived 4th of July. I hope you guys had a great 4th. Uh, enjoyed a bunch of fireworks and hopefully didn't have them, you know, misfire on you or anything. So we were, we watched them definitely from a safe distance across the bay uh, uh, over the water down here. So that was kind of cool. But, um, but it was a hot one. Yes, it was very hot here. Um, so hopefully wherever you were at, it was a little bit cooler. But uh, I think everybody had a pretty warm fourth, but we had ribs and watermelon and all that good stuff. So it was, it was a good time. But uh, today we're going to talk about barrel and we're not talking about barrels like you get whiskey in or something like that. It's spelled differently. It's you get oil in barrels. Not just whiskey barrels. Well, yeah. Wine barrels. Yeah, but we're not talking about that kind of barrel. This isn't something you... Uh, put stuff in it's something you put in jewelry so it's a mineral it is and it happens to be a, a gem species yeah and it's one that a lot of people are familiar with they just don't realize it um, emerald is a type of barrel but since we've already covered emeralds in a previous episode we're actually going to talk about all the other ones so there's uh, several other types of barrel that's used in the jewelry industry, but nobody knows them as barrels outside of, uh, you know, gemologists, I guess you could say. They're usually known by their, uh, their specific names. Yeah, and they're, and they're named because of their colors. Mm -hmm. uh, emerald is always green, and if it's not green enough, then it's called green barrel, yep. which I always thought was kind of weird. If it's, if it's not green enough, then why do they call it green barrel but well it's just like if it's not red enough it's not ruby yeah, I know but it then it can be sapphire right okay <laughs> so it's kind of weird to me a little bit yeah and then we have uh, the other one a lot of people know um, don't know it's a barrel it's aquamarine yep so aquamarine and emerald are cousins or they're the same family they more Brother, sister, brother, sister kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Aquamarine is always a blue, normally kind of a pastel or a light blue. Yep. Unless <clears> you <throat> get some really nice ones. Mm -hmm. And then there's Heliodor, which most people don't know that even exists. And It's fun to say. That kind it's of like is. chimichanga. And, and <laughs> Heliodor, you kind of wonder, well, what color would that be? Uh, so you got to kind of go back into yeah. the maybe some Latin thingy or something but it's it's a golden or a yellow barrel mm -hmm. and then you have no color barrel yep and that's is, not the technical term <laughs> no, colorless <laughs> colorless barrel so they didn't have any which color. is this one i like i like this one a lot this is goshenite so it almost sounds like it ought to be <laughs> a on, ghost <laughs> it almost ought to be on ghostbusters or something. yeah maybe that's not what they're uh uh the stone they ought to do. We ought to should have done that. The yeah. Ghostbuster stone. Yeah. You know, it's kind that. of a popular. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, this program's over. We're going to go do our little marketing <laughs> deal for Ghost Night. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of it. Oh, we got oh, we got one more. Uh, red Barrel? Nope, actually, we got two more. We got that one, and one more after that. And Red Barrel goes by Big Spite. Big Spite. And extremely yeah. rare. Um, yes. We actually had the possibilities of selling the what was the second or third largest red barrel in the world, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't. So. Also, it, some people actually refer to it as red emerald, and mm -hmm. uh, nice pieces of it will have a ruby color to it, but it's not it's not corundum or it's not ruby it's actually a barrel and uh, comes from one place in the world extremely rare yeah and only comes from utah which is yeah what is it wawa the wawa mountains in utah <laughs> yeah who who would have thought that one of the rare stones in the world is hiding out in some desert mountains in utah of all places a lot of it not very exotic a lot of the Red barrel is more like a mineral specimen. To get gem quality, yeah. red barrel is, is 
must be pretty difficult because there's not much of it around. Yeah. So what's the what's the last one that that we haven't mentioned? Then we'll go back and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about them. Morganite. So morganite is kind of a salmon peachy, peachy pink color, I guess. Yeah, kind of peachy pink to powder pink. Yeah. So kind of light, but can get some you can get some that are somewhat intense yeah. color but they're not going to be like pink sapphire or pink tourmaline right. where they're just like in your face bright pink, pink yeah something. you're if if you do i mean you're finding some incredible stuff that really nobody else has seen mm -hmm. so um i guess what we ought to do is we talk about the the more obvious ones are the ones that people know more and kind of work towards the rarer So pieces. are you going to talk about emerald again? No. Oh. We've covered emerald. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered emerald. Did, so Have we done aquamarine? We haven't done aquamarine. Oh. So I guess that's where we're going to start. And we have a lovely sample of this stuff too. Woo. We'll get this a little closer for you. I don't know if I can get, get it so that it doesn't have any glare on it, but uh, yeah, this, this is actually a really good sample of aquamarine. Normally, this stuff is light enough that you can tell that it's got a blue hue to it, but it's not real intense. So, um, what is it about aqua that's making this, you know, more of a desirable piece over the other barrels? Probably the probably the biggest thing. Most of the time, aquamarine is really clean. That's a, a big fault with emerald. Is most of the time it's got whole bunch of stuff in it that garden we call it uh, aquamarine for the most part is n normally eye clean to almost flawless maybe not quite but it's one of the let me see if I can pick that up <laughs> don't drop it don't drop it yeah really <laughs> let's do it this way there you go no, well, it's still, it's a lot lighter. It looks like it's a lot lighter than what it actually yeah. is. It's it's a little more intense in, in person, so. Yeah, you need to. And it's quite a bit larger stone in person than what it looks like on there. So. How big is this one? I don't know, it's got measurements on the back and everything, so. This one is 583. So, so almost like, six carats. It's big stone. No. Especially for, you know, a nice aqua like that. Like I said, normally it's a lighter color, and it's more of like a, um, oh, I don't know how you describe that, like a really light sky, watery blue color. Um, it's usually not overly intense. Like what, this stone's pretty intense for, for an aquamarine, especially the size. Normally you get into some of those bigger sizes and they, you know, it, it can kind of vary, but um, most of what people are gonna see is gonna be pretty light. And so it'll have a very faint blue to it, where it's almost borderline of, of the Goshenite, which we'll show you here in just a little bit. A lot of, a lot of the aquamarine is heated. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd almost say, you know, maybe they take some of the Goshenite and <clears throat> uh, probably the Goshenite maybe that's got just a little bit of a blue to it or whatever. Possibility of kind of a kind of a greenish blue I think they yeah can, you they can, can kind of that and, yeah and we're gonna show you some these are some uh, mineral specimens of, of aquamarine so this is the aquamarine in matrix or it's basically it's host rock and uh, this is the rough crystal so it's gonna go from this to what we just showed you that's cut and you can get some examples here of that too this is something that's you know an aquamarine that's got a little bit more of that greenish color to it um, and has some good size to it and um, you know we'll also talk here in a little bit about uh, the synthetics which um, are somewhat of a big deal in in barrels as well um, what what can people expect as far as like sizes and shapes whenever they're shopping for an aqua um, there's gonna be a lot of emerald cut aqua um, and sizes, uh, aquamarine can get fairly large. I mean, I've seen, we, we've actually had larger than what that one is. Um, yep. And again, what's nice is even the small stuff to the large stuff, most of the time that's fairly clean. Yeah. Like in emerald cuts, the reason that's kind of 
kind of nice that you can do emerald cuts is it's clean enough that you don't even notice the inclusions yeah uh, and the emerald cut is basically one of the fancy shapes that displays color well so mm -hmm. uh, that's really good at a colored stone if you can if you can cut in an emerald cut yep um, I'm gonna see a lot of ovals too oval uh, but probably just about any shape um, I don't know that we've seen much in the way of like a trillion, I guess. But yeah, a lot of ovals. A lot of ovals and emerald, emerald cuts, cuts are going to be your yeah. Those are going to be your most common ones that you're going to see, and uh, they do lend themselves really well to colored stone jewelry. Obviously, since most of the colored stones are going to be in those those shapes anyway. But uh, with the way that that crystal forms, it kind of lends itself to those shapes as well. So, but. Uh, yeah, aquamarines. Um, they're a birthstone, so I guess that kind of yeah, that kind of pushes a little bit more of their popularity too, and uh, increases their demand because there's a lot of people born in March, and uh, you know it it's a pretty stable stone. Um, barrels are about a seven and a half to eight on the hardness scale, so they're they're very wearable. That's the other thing too. So. Um, it, it is a nice stone to to make jewelry pieces out of and it's for the most part pretty readily available so there's a lot of calibrated and sizes and stuff like that so you know you can get matched pairs and stuff like that for earrings a lot easier too so hey Yasser I haven't seen you in a while <laughs> glad you're joining us today we're not telling you anything that you don't already know I'll tell you that <laughs> So, okay, so... I didn't know about that blue barrel. But, uh, oh yeah. How do you say that one? Max, Max X. Max, Max, Max X. Yeah. <laughs> we learned something today. I know. You, you can't go a day without learning something, right? So, um, okay, so we've kind of covered aquamarine for the most part. So the next one that's probably seen in the jewelry industry... Uh, Definitely not as often as aqua or emerald, but more often than the other ones is going to be morganite. Um, Probably more here recently since the uh, rose gold has gotten more popular. So, well, and with diamond prices going up and people wanting uh, less traditional designs, they're wanting something that's more unusual. And like you said, with the rose gold. Um, you know, more unusual stones, less expensive stones that you can get in larger sizes, people wanting something that stands out and is less traditional, something that, you know, if you got a bunch of girlfriends together, they're not going to all have the same that. thing. I know, this thing's a <laughs> pain to get open today. You have to have a key. I know. <laughs> but Morganite, um, I, a lot of people have heard of it. Not many people have seen it in person. And it can be a really beautiful stone. It's going to be really difficult to see, I know, on this camera. But, um, you know, if we shade this a little bit, nope, I don't know if that's... Help no, either. it's not helping a lot. But it's a real powder... What the heck? There we go. We lost connection for a second, so... Um, it's a real powdery pink most of the time. And, the, you know, the examples we've got here are that way. But uh, it does look really, really nice in rose gold. And so a lot of designs, you know, especially in the last couple of years, with the rose gold gaining more and more popularity, have been incorporating more and more of this morganite. Uh, there's other stones out there that have this uh, similar color, but uh, this one's one that... Maybe it, not as consistent. Yeah, not as consistent, but this also makes for more of a conversation piece, you know. Uh, the other pink stones, pink tourmalines, pink sapphires, people see those a little bit more often than what they do morganite. So, you know, when somebody walks into a room and uh, they have a real unusual ring on with a morganite in it, it's kind of a conversation piece and it kind of makes that person feel a little bit more special having something a little more So is it named unusual. after your wife? No, though she does have a morganite ring that, that I made for her for, for that reason. She she likes the color and well, obviously her name's Morgan, so that kind of... Did, did she get it at night? No. No. Yeah. Just kind of piecing this together. Morganite, you know. Just wondering. 
You should stop. <laughs> Dad jokes. Wondering about Yas- Dad jokes. Yasser, if that's like Sultan, like is he like a king or something like that? Or could be, could be. I, I've never asked. Sultan, but that's uh, a sound big, de- big deal there. <laughs> I know you've got your own your own jewelry line going on right now, so uh, congratulations with that. But uh, yeah, the Morganite, um, and and I've got some pit- we've got some other pictures in here that may be a little bit easier for you guys to see. Uh, we definitely encourage you to come in and, and kind of check them out so you can see them in person. But this is more what you're going to expect with the Morganite. And this is a little, like I said, this is a little bit easier to see with the stones. You know, they're reflecting the light and stuff so well that uh, we get a lot of glare and the camera can't pick it up real well. So this is uh, some really good examples of Morganite here, what you can expect. Uh, it's named after J.P. Morgan. Yeah, named after J.P. Morgan. Um, and was actually first discovered in Madagascar uh, in 1911. So uh, we've talked about Madagascar a little bit in uh, previous episodes, being that you know there's not many stones used in the jewelry industry that you can't find in Madagascar. So it's kind of a be kind of a cool place to visit. You know? Yeah, I just heard that that it's maybe not overly safe. Yeah, um, not just just because of the people there, but I think you got bugs and yeah, everything's trying to bite you. And yeah, I don't know. yeah, the the that would probably be a, a not fun place to go, especially if you didn't well, find it. It'd be fun as long as you didn't get bitten <laughs> or shot at, I guess. Yeah, so as long as you go and uh, <laughs> try and dig stuff up in a bubble, yeah. a steel bubble then uh, you're probably okay, but uh, other than that, might be a little bit risky. So, okay, so we've got three others that we haven't talked about. Um, one of those we don't have an example of, just because it's too rare, and we'll get to that one here in a minute. There's two, though, that we do have examples of, and really, both of these are used in the jewelry industry probably about the same so and they're not necessarily overly rare but rarely used in jewelry uh, especially uh, mass mass produced jewelry um, stuff you're gonna see in chain stores things like that and a lot of that is just due to um, there's something better yeah, there, there's it's either, either harder or yeah, there's either something better or easier to market because it's more widely known. I think the Ghostbuster um, thing, though, I think that's I right. think we could do that. We <laughs> we could we could do that. So I, I guess since he brought that up, the the next one we'll go to is is Goshenite. So while I'm getting these out, you want to talk a little bit about Goshenite? like something that we haven't said already <laughs> i know there's not a lot to say about it i mean uh, it it kind of looks a little bit like diamond um you know it it's not quite as hard it's not a refractive index is not quite as high so it doesn't have quite the the sparkle or messes with the white light quite like a diamond does um we have used some, and uh, we, we made up a, a colored stone necklace. A really large colored stone necklace. And too. we used some ghost knight in there, and, and also some diamond. Um, but, you know, now that one, we don't have to actually try to get you to notice the color because that's the color. <laughs> yeah, there's there's just not a lot to good. it. So it's one of those deals oh, where... Uh, diamond? Man, that's good. <laughs> Uh, with with Goshenite, it's one of those that uh, if it gets a little bit of a blue to it, it does fall into the aquamarine category. But with this stuff, it's pretty much colorless, and it can get in larger sizes. Almost all of it's calibrated. Almost all of it is in either uh, emerald pear or oval shapes. We do have some rounds here, but uh, again, it's one of those that it's not widely used in jewelry. Even though there is a lot of it out there, it's not widely used in the jewelry just for the simple fact that there's other stuff out there that works better. A lot of people, you know, they're going to use white sapphire in place of what this would be because it's harder, it's more durable. 
and it's readily available too. Um, you may even see rock crystal quartz being used because it's less expensive and it's got good hardness as well. With Goshenite, the I guess the big appeal with it is going to be is the conversation piece about it. You know, you're not going to have a lot of people that have heard of it or that own a piece. A lot of people have never seen it in person or they may have seen it and they just didn't realize what they were looking at. They were thinking that it's either white sapphire quartz or diamond even. Um, but, you know, it it's kind of nice because with it having calibrated sizes, bigger sizes, and it being really clean, and a lot of it out there, it's a relatively inexpensive stone, and like I said, it does make for a cool conversation piece. So, John, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, hope everything's doing well up that way. So, we're trying to make a shout out to everybody that uh, we see pop up on here every now and then, so we call you out. Hey, you were watching, so. But uh, yeah, Goshenite is kind of a fun one, kind of a fun one to say, but like I said, we can get in, in some good sizes. This one's probably about a carat and a half size here, but you know, we have a little bit of the look of diamond without getting anywhere close to the, to the cost of it. So again, it's a barrel, so you're uh, seven and a half to eight hardness. So you still have good hardness and everything. And like most barrels, they are pretty clean with the exception being emerald, obviously, and uh, the red barrel, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, the other one that we have examples of here, and I've only got a couple of stones, but they're actually really, really pretty, is Heliodor. And we kind of talked briefly about that a little bit ago with Heliodor being the golden barrel variety. So it's gonna be a yellow, which, you know, whenever we talk about these and people that have heard of barrel before, they basically associate just aquamarine and emerald but barrel comes in almost every color and so with this this one's going to be a nice golden yellow and these are actually a really nice example of heliodor we have some other ones but they're very light and i didn't want to bring those out because they're also kind of small too so they're a little bit harder to see but those are heliodor um and they can be sometimes confused with yellow diamond, yellow sapphire, uh, real intense citrine, um, even some of the garnets. Uh, just kind of depends on their, their exact color and saturation, but the Heliodor is really, really pretty. Uh, again, with having good hardness and good clarity, it does make for a good uh, stone to set in jewelry, but because very few people know about it it's not widely used and because it would have to take a whole new marketing scheme just to get it out there and get people aware of it and so it's again it's another one of those stones in this barrel family that makes for a really awesome conversation piece because nobody's got it but um, there's such unusual stones because they do they do have a different look than all the ones that they would be compared with um, though it may be slight they do have a different look and you know once that conversation gets started it's kind of a, an awe and wonder deal uh, with those stones so yeah Heliodor is golden or commonly called golden barrel nice little yellow stones there so the one we haven't talked about which is definitely by far the most rare is uh, what's called Bixbite or red barrel or red emerald um, I have actually and all my time in the jewelry industry, I've seen one piece of it, and that was actually at school. And it was in Matrix or in its host rock, and it was just a specimen. It wasn't even a cut stone. There are very, very, very few examples of this stuff in the world. And it only comes from one place, which is Wawa Mountains in Utah. This is the Red Barrel, or Red Emerald. Um, like I said, we don't have any examples here in the store just because of its rarity. There's actually a lot of museums out there that don't even, have never even thought about getting a piece of this stuff. It's so rare. And so, um, you know, when this stuff comes up, it, it commands big, big prices. Um, most of it is going to be just specimens that's going to end up going into people's collections. And... Uh, you know, it's definitely something that they're going to hold on to and be very proud to own. So, 
you know, it it kind of runs the gamut of stones here. You've got, you know, all the way from your greens, blues, yellows, pinks, reds, all these being barrels and all having a little bit different characteristics. Um, and like green emerald, the red emerald or the big spite, it does have uh, some issues with its clarity and its stability because of that. It's pretty included stone, so uh, it doesn't really lend itself to jewelry all that well. Main reasons being its clarity and, and structure there, and the other one being its rarity. It's just so rare, there's not enough examples out there, and not enough supply out there to actually make many pieces. So um, it's something that, that people might see in a museum, but seeing it in a jewelry store is pretty much an impossibility. Um, there might be a handful of stores in the world that's ever had one in in their doors. So, if you ever see one, you got the money to get it, get it because it is it is the ultimate stone to get in the barrel family. So, uh, we thank you guys for joining us today and uh, talking about all the barrels in the family here. And uh, again, not oil barrels, not whiskey barrels, not wine barrels, but barrels so uh, if you guys have any questions or anything please comment give us a give us a shout out on there or uh, send us a message we'd be glad to answer any questions that you have uh, or give us a call here at Suzanne's 361-991-7565 and again we thank you for joining us today check us out next week same time same place Tuesday mornings at 1045 here at Suzanne's with family jewels thanks and we'll see you next week